Hey everyone and welcome to the VitaCast episode 24. I'm your host Tyler Oltoff and with me is Kyle Wickling. Hey guys. And Yuki doing the recording as usual. Uh, Kyle might have some cats meowing and I might have some dogs barking. So if you hear any animals making noise, we're not weird. We just have animals <laughs> living with us. <laughs> Uh, but let's start off with uh, what we've been playing, and lately I've been playing a lot of MLB 14, the show. Still got to get that review out. I have basically all of the review done, just got to finish up a couple things, and that review will be posted for your viewing pleasure. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited. It's a fun game, but you have to wait for the review to see my whole thoughts on it. <laughs> um, what else have I played? Um... Oh, I played a little bit of Spelunky. That game's always fun. I need to play a lot more of that, though. I still have not got past the third world. I suck at that game, even though I love it so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, I played another, a little bit more of The Walking Dead Season 2, Episode 1. Uh, I'm doing like my Let's Play on my YouTube channel or whatever, so I'm playing only when I'm recording, so it's taking me a bit of time to actually get through it. So... I gotta play more of that also. <laughs> I've been avoiding your review, Kyle, so I don't get spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> My review only spoils the first season. So. Really? Okay. Yeah. Then I might have to check it out. <laughs> um, what else? I think I might have played one more thing. Oh, I've been playing a little bit more of Dragon Ball Z Battle of Z. That game is awesome, and it was on sale. It's, probably, it's not on sale anymore by the time you listen to this, so if you didn't get a chance to buy it, then that's unfortunate, because it was $10 if you had plus. So now it's back to 30 bucks, I believe. So <laughs> hopefully you jumped on that deal because that was a really good deal for that game. And oh, I also played Kyle's favorite game, Terraria. Oh, God. Because they, <laughs> they updated it, and the, the update makes the game so much better. It's ridiculous. Like, I won't go into it, but they just made everything a lot smoother and added some features that just make it more like a game. <laughs> so I'm definitely loving it. I have to play some more. So. Other than that, I think that's it. So, what about you, Kyle? What have you been playing? Well, I haven't been playing a whole lot. Um, I finished up my Ragnarok Odyssey Ace review, so that's up on the site. Um, and I'm taking a break from that game now that I've put over 50 hours into it, and I'm playing some Conception 2. Nice. And, yeah, and I'm still not sure how I'm feeling about this. It seems pretty... <laughs> I don't know. Like, the, uh, the out of um, gate, like dungeon out of dungeon areas yeah. where you're actually like you know talking to people and stuff like that i find that okay but i don't know the dungeons just seem cheesy to me yeah i'm enjoying I'm it. I mean, time. you and i are, are a little different on that game like i like it a little more than i think you do <laughs> yeah i think so but i do see the flaws that you point out like i notice them it's just i don't think they bother me as much as they bother you yeah i don't know <laughs> just, I don't know. It seems really like shallow. Like the game is shallow in the in the dungeon play. Like I don't know. It just seems like you throw attacks at like this thing. You just have to keep like I don't know, healing yourself or giving yourself potions until you win. I don't know. Yeah. It seems yeah. like you can just build up potions and then win anything. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It just seems seems kind of like one dimensional. Yeah. Well, maybe give it some more time. You never know. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know, I'm giving it some time anyway, now that I have uh, some time away from Ragnarok Odyssey Ace. Yeah. And I've been playing Hot Shots Golf. I actually got the PS3 version of the game, but I haven't downloaded it yet, and I'm probably going to bust that out and play some of that, too. Nice, you're going to have to <laughs> let me know how that version is. Yeah, I will. And that's it? Um, yeah, I think so. i got Borderlands queued right now downloading, so I'll probably Same be playing here. that a bit. <laughs> Just a bit. I'll be playing it a lot. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right. Well, speaking of Borderlands 2, uh, what do we got coming out this week, Kyle? Well, Tyler, we have a couple of different games. Uh, we've got Borderlands 2, but it's only coming out in the uh, bundle pack that's out today. Um, we've got Broken Sword 5, The Serpent's Curse, Part 1 in North America. We've got Football Ma Manager Classic 2014 in North America. We've got The God of War Collection coming out today in North America and tomorrow in Europe, I believe. And Titan Attacks coming out today in 
North America and tomorrow in Europe, I believe, as well. So it's a very nice week. <laughs> yeah, it shouldn't be too bad. I don't think we're getting too much in, in the way of deals. There wasn't anything in the uh, PlayStation Plus thing other than um, I, th- I think there was a deal on Titan Attacks for PlayStation Plus users. But I gotcha. other than that, it didn't look like there was much other than what they're going to announce on the actual store update. So we'll have to wait for that. All right. Sounds good. Any of those games you're getting? Uh, I don't know. Nothing grabbing. Probably, you. probably got a war eventually, but I'm not super hyped about it right now. I just have too much to play, and they didn't really grab me the first time, so I'll probably just jump in because it's Vita. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I've never been really the biggest fan of God of War, so I don't know. I might, I might, <laughs> but <laughs> I, I have way too many games right now, so it's definitely not one that I'm going to get day one. Yeah. All right. Well, let's head on over to the news. We don't have as much as we did last time, so that's <laughs> that's good. We'll get through this pretty quick. Uh, first up, Curves, Titan Attack, The Swapper, and Mousecraft dated. So they've announced the release dates for their upcoming PlayStation Vita titles. Uh, the first of the three to hit retro-styled shooter Titan Attack is set for May 6th, which is today. And May 7th, uh, tomorrow for Europe. Uh, second in the release lineup is The Swapper, which was originally set for a May release but had to be delayed. Uh, the Swapper is now set to release June 24th in North America and June 25th in Europe. And last but definitely not least, it's the puzzle game Mousecraft, a game which has players dropping Tetris like blocks and stages to guide mice to cheese. It's set to release July 8th in North America and July 9th in Europe. Um. Next up, Arcana Heart 3 Love Max coming to North America. Uh, So Axis Games has just announced that the all-female fighting game Arcana Heart 3 Love Max is coming to North America this fall. Uh, Here's the introductions from the official press release. Quote, Arcana Heart 3 Love Max promises to provide players with copious combo creations, panoramic picks, beautifully detailed backgrounds and 23 adorable combatants in this fully feminine fighting game from Xamu Inc. and Arc System Works Co. Ltd. Basically, it's an air-dashingly good time, end quote. Uh, The game contains 23 characters, each with their own unique skills, looks, hidden scenarios, steamy hot springs, pictures, and more. Each character also has 19 different color schemes and can be paired with 23 arcana creating hundreds of possibilities for final skill sets it does also it also contains a time attack mode with a special enemy at the end gold gal a regular mode with a mega boss named ragnarok and much more content to keep you busy replays of your amazing battles can be saved viewed and even received by other players that's kind of cool allowing you to share your victor- victorious victories with friends Arcana Heart 3 Love Max will be available this fall in the West. Uh, the game coming with the original Japanese audio and English subtitles. As for the graphics, there's no need to worry. Pierce, this one is supposedly a silky 60 frames per second. Sweet. And up next, PlayStation Vita Firmware 3.15. It's already out. So I'll read what it adds. PS4 Link update for remote play. Linking your PlayStation 4 and PlayStation Vita together will now be easier with the 3.15 update for PlayStation Vita. It's in, it's, it'll enable automatic device registration, which will automatically detect and p- pair both systems when they're both online and the same user is signed in to both devices. This makes it even quicker for you to get started on remote play or access other second screen features. So, yeah, it's up now, so go update your Vita. You'll probably have to, depending on what certain things you decide to try, because they like to do that. And Wait, is this one mandatory? I'm pretty sure this one is mandatory. Yeah, so this one will be forced upon you. <laughs> so The only, yeah. thing, the only thing I kind of think that's, that's bad about um, the updates is the way that they do them. Um, if you're away from your house or something, and you're logging in via remote play, you're kind of screwed, because... I actually tried to do this. I updated my Vita, then logged in on my Vita and tried to update my PlayStation 4. I was in the same room, but I was just too lazy to get up. And it wouldn't connect because it wasn't on the latest firmware. So you can't even connect to the PlayStation 4 to update if you have a firmware update. Huh. It's kind of, eh. 
That's so it'll have like one back or whatever so that you can update. Yeah. But yeah, I thought that was kind of meh. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, moving on with the news. Um, Sword Art Online Hot All Fragment is set to get a giant update in Japan this July. And we've got some details on what that update brings. So this new update is set to bring major change to Aincrad, adding around 30 hours of content to the title. Uh, to better serve their potential buyers, Bando Na- Bandai Namco Games is even asking for suggestions from fans, trying to incorporate everything they can into this update package before it releases this July. As it stands, we've confirmed that the update will increase the level cap from 200 to 250, and that it will add both new quests and new areas to explore. It'll also include new monsters. Uh, there's a picture of a new boss uh, monster art in the post here. Um, we'll also get a look at concept art for a new garden area set to be included in the update, where you'll be engaging in event scenes with Sachi, featuring both conversations and dates. And it seems that the update will be giving Philia a whole new outfit, though we expect that trend to extend across other characters as well. Sword Art Online Hollow Fragment is currently available in Japan and is set to be released this summer in North America. We'll have more on this update, including whether or not it'll be rolled into the North American release in the near future. Awesome. <laughs> yes. Anything. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping that they include it in the North American release, which I don't see why they wouldn't. Yeah, me too. Usually when they do stuff like that, big updates, it's included in the, the release of the yeah. Game in other territories. <laughs> All right, here. Uh, some more Sword Art Online news. Sword Art Online Hall of Fragment storyline and companion title revealed. So Bandai Namco Games America has announced the details of upcoming RPG Sword Art Online Hall of Fragment storyline. In Sword Art Online Hall of Fragment, I've said that like a million times now. Um, <laughs> you will take <laughs> you take the role of Kirito. Kirito has been locked in Aincrad, a virtual reality world, by the creator of the game. Thousands of other players, including characters that were popular in the original anime series, are also trapped with Kirito. The players must explore the fantastical and dangerous world and defeat the enemies that they come across if they want to escape. If the player dies in the fantasy VR world, their character will die in real life, so fighting is essential for survival. By actively engaging with monsters and characters in this world, players will experience breathtaking combos, aggressive battles with jaw-dropping action, or attack actions, and powerful burst attacks. Senior Vice President of Sales and Marketing for Bandai Namco Games in America, Chris Gilbert, said that, quote, Sword Art Online is a highly rated series that contains storyline and battle elements that seamlessly translate into a thrilling RPG experience. He goes on to add that with the series storyline rooted in a vast virtual reality game in of itself, players can look forward to being immersed in a unique game within a game as they explore the dangers and wonders of Sword Art Online, end quote. In additional news, Bandai Namco Games America has also revealed that previous game in the franchise, Sword Art Online Infinity Moment, will be included in HD as a companion title to Sword Art Online Hollow Fragment. Originally released for PlayStation Portable in Japan, this combo will be the first time that both titles have featured together. Scheduled for release in digital format only, Sword Art Online Hollow Fragment is set to release in North America this summer. As always, the Vita Lounge will keep you up to date with all news surrounding this title as it happens. So Ooh. awesome that it includes the PSP title, because I don't even think that was released over here before. Yeah, I don't think so. That's awesome. So I'm down to play that too, <laughs> <laughs> even yeah. if it doesn't include trophies. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely make that give it a sacrifice. Shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll definitely have to give it a shot. <laughs> All right, moving on. HB Studios and Big Ben Interactive announced that Rugby 15 is coming to PlayStation Vita, among other consoles, this autumn. Quote, aiming to become the new standard for rugby games, end quote, Rugby 15 comes from developer HB Studios, a developer who has had its hand in rugby games before with Rugby World Cup 2011. This game will include the official licenses for the top 14 and Pro D2 professional French rugby leagues, as well as the official teams from the 2014-2015 rugby season. 
Alan Falk, CEO of Big Ben Interactive, the publisher of the title, had this message to go along with the announcement of Rugby 15. Quote, With this new sports simulation, we are pursuing our strategy of moving up market with strong licenses and quality partnerships, as with HB Studios. Today, it gives us great pleasure to announce the very first rugby game on a new generation consoles with the Top 14 and Pro D2. Thanks to the support of the Ligue Nationale de Rugby, French Rugby Association, we are certain that fans of the sport will enjoy it. End quote. There are no screenshots or video at this time, not even a promotional logo. However, however we'll be keep, sure to keep you apprised as this one develops. And one more. Rocket Cat Games to release titles on Vita? Question mark. So, indie developer Rocket Cat Games, famed for mobile titles such as Wayward Souls, Punch Quest, and Mage Gauntlet, have hinted that they plan to release their titles on PlayStation Vita. When Twitter user and Rocket Cat fan at Will Flair stated that he would like to see more iOS games on the Vita, specifically those made by Rocket Cat Games, the developer responded with, We plan on this. Although there isn't much information to go on yet, Rocket Cat Games' back catalog does include some brilliant titles which would be perfect on the PlayStation Vita. As soon as any details emerge about this possibility, we here at the Vita Lounge will be here to have to keep you informed of any developments. Alright. Alright. Moving right along. <clears throat> Drifter explores the PlayStation Vita. Colin Walsh, founder of Celsius, Celsius, I can't pronounce that. Celsius, Celsius, maybe that's Celsius. is that Celsius? Am I dumb? Anyways, <laughs> I think it's Celsius. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking. Hold on one sec. I think I just read it wrong. Yeah, I'm just gonna assume it's Celsius. <laughs> yeah, it's Celsius. All right. Anyways, founder of Celsius Game Studios took to the PlayStation blog today to announce that the space ex exploration game Drifter is heading to PlayStation Vita, drawing inspiration from classic space adventure games like Privateer and Starflight. Drifter, not to be confused with Hyperlight Drifter, is an open-world exploration game that places the player in a randomly generated galaxy that stretches 100,000 light-years across. The player is given a ship, a handful of cash, and the rest is up to you. Want to mine minerals and sell them for cash? Go for it. You can take on the role of a trader, bounty hunter, or the pirate being hunted. You are the captain of your own spaceship and your destiny. According to Walsh, uh, quote, In addition to this huge sandbox to play in Drifter, will also feature a handcrafted series of story missions which will, which will allow the player to which the player can embark upon to both advance their character as well as learn more about the backstory of the Drifter universe, end quote. Uh, the game will be releasing on both the PlayStation Vita and PlayStation 4. There's no date or pricing yet, but we will keep you informed when we find that out. Uh, there's also a, a trailer if you want to check it out on the site, so go to the site and watch the trailer. It actually looks pretty awesome. I've watched the trailer. I'm interested. <laughs> Um, next up, another word I can't pronounce. Axiom? Axiom? Uh, yeah, it's Axiom. Oh, look at that. First try. <laughs> <laughs> Axiom Verge coming to Vita in 2015. A post on the PlayStation, PlayStation blog clues us in on this pub-funded, limitless adventure of a game. Axiom Verge looks like a complex throwback to retro-styled action games. The twist being that you can use glitches to break free of the normal limitations of the game. Here's the official description from the PlayStation blog. Quote, Axiom Verge is a retro-styled 2D Metroidvania action-adventure inspired by such classics as Riger, Contra, Bionic, Commando, Blaster Master, and of course Metroid. But it also gives you power over glitches like those found in classic games, allowing you to scramble enemies, corrupt environments, and enter hidden areas. Uh, the game features expansive, non-linear exploration of nine labyrinth interlocking areas, gobs of unique tools and abilities, loads of weapons, and tons of health, power, attribute upgrades. Uh, combat with dozen, uh, dozens of unique creatures and bosses, glitches allowing you to break past the boundaries of normal gameplay. Speedrun mode, play with a streamlined interface and additional features to facilitate speedrunning. Uh, there's a trailer if you want to check that out, and some screenshots. Uh, Axiom Verge is set to hit PlayStation Vita and PlayStation 4 in early 2015. 
And you can check the original post on the PlayStation blog if you want. Just go to our site and check it out. Watch the trailer. See if it's something that interests you. Uh, next up, Sparkplug Games Mech Runner needs a final kick. Boasting character designs from the man who worked on the Iron Man, Avengers, and Transformers films, we brought you the news last month that Mech Runner had appeared on Kickstarter appealing for $25,000 to help finish it off. Set for release this summer, it features endless style arcade action game mixed with the Fast and Furious mode changing mech action, according to the project's page. Constantly on the go, missions could last seconds or minutes depending on your skill and feature the ability to switch forms along the way to causing some serious damage. The main features are meticulously detailed fast paced action, switch between tank and robot modes on the fly, slice and dice enemy units with your swords, extensive arsenal of weapons, customizations, and power ups. Numerous enemy types with different tactics, unlockable skins, upgrades, and achievements, and an amazing Hollywood quality soundtrack. And there's a couple more features, I just didn't read them, so you get to go to the site. I uh, like what you see, so uh, the game, you need to go uh, back it until May 17th. They need another 18,000 uh, when this was posted, so they might need less now. But if it's something that interests you, go help them out. Alrighty then. So. Charlie brought you the news last month about the upcoming Legend of Doodle, and today, uh, well, whenever this was posted, <laughs> we got our hands on a few new details and screens. The game has been in and out of PC development for several years, but is finally gearing up for a Q2 2014 release. In it, you guide the hero, Doodle, through a hastily scribbled world, and along the way you will experience many different environments as you seek to free the kingdom from the evil king, H.B., Exploration is rewarded with many secrets and collectibles. So the main features of the game are 500 plus bite-sized challenges, several worlds to explore, each host to a variety of new obstacles and mechanics, tons of secrets to find and bonus content to unlock, moody atmospheric original soundtrack, lengthy boss fights to throw you into unique situations with several offbeat enemies, unlockable two-player modes, Put your skills to the test in competitive and cooperative challenges. There is no word on pricing still or an exact release date, but we'll bring you the news when we find out. Uh, up next is Starlight Inception Update. So Starlight Inception is the Kickstarter-funded game from Escape Hatch Entertainment. It was released on the PlayStation Vita last week, but we are holding off on a review for a few weeks. While playing the game for the last week, it was pretty clear that the game, this is Brad talking here, is a little unpolished. Text and menus are too small to read, HUD elements are missing in first-person view, plus there are a number of other bugs and technical glitches that are really distract from the game. Um, Brad contacted Escape Hatch Entertainment concerning the issues he was having, and they quickly got back to him with information about a major new patch they were working on that addresses nearly every issue he was having. In light of this information, we decided to hold off on our review until after these fixes were in place. It wouldn't be fair to anyone to present a review filled with complaints, only to have all those complaints patched out of the game, assuming the patch fixes what is broken. Uh, once the update is out, we will have our full review ready to go. The update is expected to be released in the next two to four weeks. Here's the full list of improvements currently being worked on in this first patch. Uh, increase across the board of ship speeds by a factor of 1.5 with regular use and 3 with afterburners. Still testing to find the sweet spot, but this increase really changes the experience of the game. Adjusting cost of the ships to make them more accessible. Uh, also, adjusting the size and sharpness of the text elements in the main HUD to increase clarity, making vital HUD elements readable while in cockpit view, adding autopilot between waypoints if all targets are eliminated, making the mission traversal optional and increasing characters on the ship, changing the function of the purchase dialog to use something other than circle and to give confirmed dialog before purchasing equipment and ships in the game, 
Uh, by the way, this uses command points, the in-game currency, not real currency. Um, there, there's like a million here. There's 19 fixes, so I'm not going to read the rest of them, but it looks <laughs> like it, it, it fixes a lot of really small, you know, details that were kind of off about the game and uh, some, some bigger stuff as well. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's always to nice to, to do that, but it looks like um, just by this patch that they pushed the game out a little early. Yeah, and, yeah, it's kind of unfortunate. I think they should have given it some time, but maybe uh, uh, Sony was pushing them to get it out. Yeah, it kind of sucks when that happens because a lot of games seem to come out when they could have used like another month or two and it would have been perfect. Yeah. yeah. All right, moving on. Official Killzone Mercenary Bot Naming Contest. So SCEA are holding a contest to pick new bot zone bot names, keeping track of leaderboard stats for the next seven days, and picking winners in six different areas. So announced on the PlayStation blog today, today was May 2nd, um, it seems as if SCEA is holding a Name Our Bots contest and everyone's favorite portable shooter. Here's the meat of the post, including the official rules. This is a quote. Starting now until May 9th at 8 a.m. Pacific, the registration site will be live. At the registration site, you must log in with your PSN credentials, type in three bot names you wish to submit for possible inclusion, read the official rules, and then click on the box to confirm you read the rules. This is how you could win from the start of the competition phase, May 9th at 8.01 a.m. Pacific until May 16th at 9 a.m. Pacific. We'll keep track of the leaderboard rankings in the following categories in all public multiplayer matches. Most grenade kills, most interrogations, most rescues, most vanguard kills, most headshots, and most kills. All players from Argentina, Canada, excluding Quebec, Chile, Mexico, and the United States who successfully submitted their entry to the website prior to the com competition phase are eligible to win. The top five registered players in each category will get one of their three submitted bot names into the game, assuming said names meet the entry requirements in Section 7 of the official rules. You can only win once, and only public matches will count. So in short, enter before 8 a.m. Pacific on May 9th. There's a link on the post. And play as many public multiplayer matches as you can in any game mode without sucking to increase your chance of winning. Uh, here's what you need to participate, a PlayStation Vita system, the Killzone Mercenary game patched to the latest version, and an internet connection. That's it. Winners will be announced via the PlayStation blog. End quote. So make sure to sign up at the official registration site. There's a whole bunch of links to it on that post. Or your entry won't count. And good luck to all those who enter. And let us know how you do and what crazy names you sub submit. So, oh, yeah. Are you going to yeah. try it? No, uh, I don't play Killzone Mercenary often enough to, to win any of those. I got gotcha. <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah. too, too many other games to play. But if, yeah, I, I would if it was like, you know, release week, I think. You know, yeah. me and you would be up there in numbers. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a cool idea, though. I, they're giving people the chance to help with the game and whatnot, even if it's just yeah. a name. <laughs> they should be giving people who um, get a, a bot name in a free bot zone DLC. Yeah, that they should. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next up. Exploring the controls, contents, and co-op of Borderlands 2. With Borderlands 2 set to release on the PlayStation Vita next week, or today if you got the bundle, new information has been revealed about what we can expect from the game in regards to its control scheme, content, and cooperative features. Speaking of which, my game actually just finished downloading, so I could start playing right now and just end the podcast, so see you guys later. <laughs> Uh, in the post on the PlayStation blog, we are told what to expect when playing Iron Galaxy Studios' version of Gearbox Software's iconic first-person shooter. It is said that Borderlands 2's controls are, are highly customizable with the ability to remap the game's control scheme to your heart's content, which is awesome. Uh, to change a control, all you need to do is go to the options, tap whichever button you wish to reassign, including abilities mapped to the touchscreen rear touchpad, and then tap the button that you want to assign the action to. The rear touchpad by default is set to sprint and melee depending on where you touch, with the touchscreen set to tossing grenades or activating your character's special ability. 
the left and right shoulder buttons are as expected to aim and shoot, similar to Uncharted's Golden Abyss. Uh, you can use the PlayStation Vita's gyroscope to position your aim when aiming down the sights of a gun. Uh, the blog post also tells us that the game performs well, running at around 30 frames per second. Character models and environments are also said to be detailed, and that the game has the same feel to as the console version. There's a slight downside to all of this. To make Borderlands 2 work as well as it does, there has been a reduction in the co-op player count. SCE third-party productions have confirmed that they did strive to include four-player co-op. However, this was cut to two-player late on in development to focus on making Borderlands 2 the best two-player co-op experience possible. All is not bad news, though. Borderlands 2 on the PlayStation Vita will feature all the DLC that has been released for the console versions, including uh, DLC characters Cage... Uh, the Necromancer and Craig the Psycho, Captain Scarlet and her Pirate's Booty campaign pack, Mr. Torg's uh, campaign of Carnage co- campaign pack, the Vault Hunter upgrade pack, and the Collector's Edition pack. Another bonus feature for those that have played the console version is that Borderlands 2 on the Vita will feature cross-save. This is available for those who have been who have played either of the standard or Game of the Year versions and works by uploading your save to the cloud on one system and pulling it down to the other. Uh, will you, well, yeah. That's awesome. Although, it's unfortunate about the two-player thing, but I would rather have a much better experience than just being able to play with four people and have a horrible experience, so I'm not too worried about that, but I could see some people being really frustrated about that, especially if that a whole bunch of friends get the game and they're like, yay, we all can play, and it's like, nope, <laughs> you can't. <laughs> yeah, it's it's better to have a good experience than a bad one, though. Like, yeah. Even me with Ragnarok Odyssey Ace, like I got into some matches where it was just like a slideshow. Like I might as well just sit back and watch pop or like eat popcorn and watch like this slideshow that's going on. Yeah. Yeah, I'm probably yeah, you don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Borderlands two. I'm uh, getting really excited to play it, but I have to wait, so <laughs> So yeah. Um next up, Orshika Tainted Bloodlines Monk and Cannoneer classes. Uh, we get some information on the Monk and Cannoneer classes, two of the eight available classes you can choose from in Orashika. The Monks in this game are Kenpo trained and excel at close range combat, able to perform multiple hit energy hits uh, in rapid succession. They also have an above average kick, able to repel any foe with a single bit of contact. Monks aren't built to use heavy armor, but have a high evasion rate to make up for it. Uh, the monks have the advantage close range, but cannoneers are the advantage winners at a distance, with the ability to switch between powerful single shots to shotgun-like spread pattern ammunition. They're also good for attacking single or multiple foes. Their only downside is that they can only use light armor. Uh, the goddess Naruko, who sacrificed her life to bring the family back to life, will be joining your party later in the game. Naruko has her own unique summoner-like job class called Onmiyoshi and uses a whip based on a centipede Shikigami to attack rows of enemies at at a time. Her only downside is that she can only equip light armor, but she has a high evasion rate to compensate. Nero- Nier- oh gosh, <coughs> I just said the name. Nyoko will be able to use other Shikigami, which each with different abilities on the battlefield. When Nyako calls a... Sh- well, I have to say this so many times. Shikigami. They can either appear as a part of her body, as a spirit that lasts a few turns, or as a sign of certain effects. Uh, here's a look at, at one of the Shikigami Nier- Nyoku can use called Yushiomaru. Kyle, you're probably just giggling over there. It's a fiddler... <laughs> <laughs> fiddler- Crab Shikigami, and when summoned, Nyoko's arm gains some pinchers. They c- these can be used to chew through enemies like scissors through paper. And there's a a few screenshots if you want to check them out. I'm not going to read too much of it. Uh, Orishika Tana Bloodlines is set to release to be released on July 17th in Japan, with a res- Western release in the books, but not yet dated. Interesting. The game looks pretty cool and colorful. So, yeah. Go check out the yeah. screenshots. <laughs> <laughs> now that you've said it a million times, I'd love to correct you. Nueco. Ah, oh, jeez. Thanks, Kyle. <laughs> After I say it a million times. Nyorko. <laughs> hey, Kyle. Shut up. <laughs> well, I, I have to correct you. It was just too funny. <laughs> <laughs> 
Anyways, up next. God Eaters 2 uh, online multiplayer coming late May. In December, Bandai Namco Games announced that they were working on patching online multiplayer into their title. Now it's almost here. Bandai Namco has spent their valuable Golden Week holidays working on adjustments and debugging, trying to prepare their new 1.40 update for Japanese consumption. They apologize for not being able to give a specific date on the patch due to possible unforeseen hurdles. However, they note that the next two weeks will be the final step in development, so they dis- so they expect to be busy until they can get it released. Uh, God Eater 2 originally came out on November 14th in Japan, and we'll keep you updated when the patch becomes available. All right. So, CL No Surge coming to an end with final chapter. So, Gust has recently announced that Japanese life simulation game CL No Surge will be coming to an end with the final chapter set to release. Gust announced at an event that the game will be coming to an end with a final chapter. During this event, a slideshow gave a glimpse of this final chapter, the grand finale. Although details are thin on the ground, I, Kakuma, who does the voiceover for Ion, said that I feel sad that it's going to end, but I'm also excited to see what happens next for the girls. To those of you who have kept up with us till now, please look after us until the very end. Originally released as one episode, CL No Surge had more episodes added as DLC. Gust will announce more on CL No Surge's final chapter in the near future, and as they do, the Vita Lounge will be sure to keep you updated. So the Japanese sales tracker MediaCreate reports that Sword Art Online Hollow Fragment has sold 145,029 copies in its first week. (laughs) Releasing on the 24th of April, Sword Art Online Hollow Fragment has sold through 82.5% of its shipment. PSB predecessor Sword Art Online Infinity Moment sold 138,180 copies in its first week, so Sword Art Online Hollow Fragment has debuted slightly higher. According to retailers in Japan, the majority of gamers that bought Sword Art Online Hollow Fragment were junior high school students and above. <laughs> Just like Tyler. Uh, this is a similar <laughs> audience to that of which PlayStation Beta has sold to over the past year. Media Craig going to suggest that those who bought the PSP game, Sword Art Online Infinity Moment, have switched over to Sword Art Online Hollow Fragment on the Vita. Set to release in North America this summer as a digital-only title featuring the PSP game, Sword Art Online Hollow Fragment looks promising. To keep up with all the news surrounding this title, be sure to check the Vita Lounge regularly. And our last bit of news. Thanks to Explosion.com, we've discovered that the Superman market giant Tesco have a listing on their website for a Vita version of XCOM Enemy Unknown. It's slated for release on July 3rd, which is a Thursday, a day not normally reserved for UK game releases, for 20 British pounds. A turn-based tactical RPG and originally released in 2012 to high acclaim, the title sees set in the near future during an alien invasion of Earth, and you are in control of an elite multinational paramilitary organization called XCOM and your job is to protect the planet. The listing reads, From the makers of Sid Meier's Civilization comes a game about civilization's last stand. As the commander of an elite paramilitary organization known as XCOM, you control Earth's defenses against a terrifying alien invasion. This package includes the ward ruining XCOM Enemy Unknown and XCOM Enemy Within expansion, plus all the released add-on content. And then it lists all the different stuff about the game here that I'm not going to read because it's like a page long. And we are filing this under rumors for now, and I've reached out to Tesco and 2K for more information. Any XCOM fans here, what do you guys think? Let us know in the comments. Pretty cool. Hopefully that's a true rumor. <laughs> Hopefully. There's been a lot of um, posts going up where it's like, you know, this game's coming out and then it ends up being true, just the release date is wrong, so... Yeah. It's possible. Yeah, I've heard a lot of people like in XCOM, so... Hopefully. I don't know, I, I've never played it. Yeah, I've never played it either, but I know that a lot of people... I've heard a lot of people talk about it and say that they love it, so if it can come to the Vita, why not? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, well... That's all the news. Yay. Yay. It wasn't as long. That was like 20 minutes, maybe? Yeah, that's pretty short. 
Yeah. All right. Well, let's head on over to listener mail. Kyle, what do we got this week? All right. This is a pretty complex one. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> with all the success the localizing company Axis had with the Atome game Hakuoki, I wonder if it's a matter of time before we see more dating games like Eustia of the Tarnished Wings make their way west via the Vita. I would love to see more visual novels make their way west, but more specifically dating sim ones that are on handhelds. My question is, do you think we'll see more dating visual novel games make their way west on the Vita? And do you guys believe Eustia of the Tarnished Wings even has a chance at western localization? Would love you guys' input. David Goodman B. Email. Well, <laughs> this is an interesting question because I have like no knowledge of any of the things that he just asked. About, <laughs> I don't know the game he's talking about. Uh, so I'm not really much of a help other than <laughs> the chance of it being wet, uh, localized, I guess, would just de- de- term, would be if uh, it shows like, uh, I can't think of the word right now. If it shows interest, like if you have a lot of people that are begging for it, then they might do it. Like Kyle and I have been bugging uh, Namco about uh, bringing Sword Art Online over, and you know because of Kyle and I, we got it to happen. I'm just kidding, it wasn't because <laughs> Kyle and I, but <laughs> if you have enough people wanting it, then why not? <laughs> All right. Well, I guess I'll jump in now. You might know more um, than I do. <laughs> Yeah, kind of. I actually recognize all these words, though. I don't know if you do. <laughs> I don't. No, no. So none of this makes sense to me. <laughs> no, it's all, it's all Greek to you. Pretty much. Yeah, all right. Well, I, I don't know this game you see of the Tarnished Wings, um, so I can't sp- speak specifically to that game's chances of making its way west. Although, I have to say, if you look at what's been going on with the Vita and how many games... You know, they've said, you know, coming out of Japan only or only announced for Japan and then a year down the road or six months down the road, we get an announcement for North America or, and Europe. So, I don't know. There's there's possibility for anything if the want is there. If somebody can show, you know, that there's, there's um, a market for it, then there's people that are going to be wanting to buy it, then those people will bug the company and therefore it will come. So, I don't know, it, it depends how big the um, fan base is for that game. As for visual novels and dating sim ones making their way west, I could definitely see that happening. Um, th- th- they've been pushing the kind of the boundaries on, on what they'll bring over here now. You know, we're getting uh, Senran Kagura kind of stuff. Um, you know, they're just they're 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 pushing the boundaries over here on what they they'll allow anymore. So I could definitely see something like that coming. And visual novels, especially after um, their integration into like games like Persona Four Golden, even though it's an RPG, it has visual novel elements. Um, games like uh, Virtue's Last Reward and Danganronpa, which are visual novels, um, coming over here and and the success that they've had, I could definitely see more more coming. So. Yeah, there's my input. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, hopefully his game gets localized. If Hopefully. Yeah, because more games, the better. <laughs> and was that all we had, Kyle? Yeah, that's all we had. Well, you guys Kyle, are skimping on the uh, questions and comments. You're a liar, because I went on Facebook before we started and posted on the Vita Lounge Facebook page saying we're about to start and got any questions, and we got, like, four more questions. Well, Tyler, I'm sorry that I'm a liar, but I don't go on Facebook ever, <laughs> so that's probably why. <laughs> that would be probably why. All right, so I guess I'll ask questions this time, Kyle. It's, we're right. switching it up. <laughs> All right, so... Albert Tran says, Borderlands 2, speculations and expectations. So he's wondering what we think Borderlands 2 is going to be like. And from what I've seen from the videos, uh, the, the first video that I saw of the, uh, when it was at the event, it was, looking a lo- it was looking good, but it had problems. But uh, then Sony said that they fixed those. So at the moment, I'm not really sure exactly what to expect, but I'm hoping... A nice, smooth gameplay, and <laughs> when there's lots of enemies on the screen, I don't want to see frame rate issues, but I have a feeling there's going to be. 
So I'm trying to, I'm trying to have low expectations because I don't want to jump into the game thinking it's going to be amazing and then it be not as good as I was expecting and be disappointed. So I'm lowering my expectations. And <laughs> Kyle, you're not really one to really care for this one, are you? Well, I don't know. Like I, I figured they they weren't going to make it perfect just because of um, you know they had to sacrifice so much graphical quality and blah 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 to get it there like to where they've got it so it's not going to be perfect but you know I, th- I think they know what they're doing so I think you're going to get a product that's at least playable more so than you know these other games that we've had in the past that are um, you know ported over collections or blah 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 um, I-, I think it's going to be more playable but whether or not it's perfect eh. yeah, you rarely get a perfect port unless the guys who are working on it get enough time and you know when do you ever get enough time <laughs> yeah. Well, let's all hope it's better than we all expect. <laughs> yeah, we hope. We'll find out soon enough. I think both you and I have it downloading, and or you have it downloaded. Yeah. And, uh, I've yeah. actually just started mine. I'm letting the cutscene play right now. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah. So, Albert. Hopefully, we are not disappointed. Um, yeah. Uh, next up. I'm just kind of reading them before I actually say them out loud. Um, <laughs> here's one. Uh, Nathan Rodriguez asks, uh, who out of the group is getting a Vita 2000? Any pluses or minuses to the LED screen? Uh, I know Kyle's not getting it. I actually <laughs> have it. That's because I got the Borderlands 2 bundle. That's why I have it on my Vita right now. Um, but... Pluses or minuses about the LED screen. Uh, the plus, I guess, is that it's not going to drain your battery as quick as the o- LED. But the minuses is it's not going to look as good as the OLED. So, I mean, depends on which one you want to look at better. <laughs> uh, I know the LED will also have, like, it's going to have, like, darker colors, right? Like, it's not going to have as vibrant. Yeah, they're not going to be as vibrant. So, they're going to be, like, muted. Right. So, I mean, if it's your first experience to the Vita... You might, you probably won't notice it, but if you already have the original Vita and you decide to upgrade, I guess quotation marks on upgrade <laughs> to the Vita 2000, you'll probably notice a lot of differences. So, I mean, the Vita 2000 is definitely a good Vita to jump into if you've never had the Vita. I think personally, and it feels great. That. You don't agree with it? I would agree with that. Oh, if okay. you haven't had a Vita, then you might as well jump in with the Vita 2000, especially if you can find a cheap one because yeah. A lot of people imported and then bought the actual Vita 2000. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, <clears throat> Nathan, if you haven't, if you don't have a Vita at all, or if you're thinking about upgrading, I, I mean, just weigh the options and see if it's really something you would see yourself using. I mean, if you if your Vita 1000 is perfect to you, then no reason to drop 200 bucks and get a new one, right? Like, Unless you're like Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shh, shut up, Kyle. How many Vitas do you have now, Tyler? Three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How many hands do you have, Tyler? Two. How many Vitas can you play at once? Well, two if you're playing a one-handed game, but that would be pretty funny. Well, no, unless it's like <laughs> touchscreen only. I have like ten fingers. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you can play like three touchscreen only games at the time. Yeah, whatever. Anyways. <laughs> uh, thanks, Nathan, for asking that. Uh, up next, uh, Jack Gall asks... Are you excited for Soul Sacrifice Delta and why? This is a good question for Kyle. Kyle? <laughs> Hell yes, I'm excited for Soul Sacrifice Delta. Why? Because Soul Sacrifice was awesome. I played the demo for Soul Sacrifice Delta and that was awesome. So Soul Sacrifice Delta is probably going to be awesome. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> Hopefully it is because I, I love Soul Sacrifice. But like we've talked about earlier in earlier episodes... I want to make sure that Delta is like a decent upgrade, not just like a cash grab and I get bored quick, kind of like how Ragnarok Odyssey Ace is to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, so. at least with Soul Sacrifice, you're starting with a good game. So even though you're making like something that's an enhanced game or whatever you want to call this, half an upgrade or whatever, um, even though you're making something like that, you have a good game as your base. With Ragnarok Odyssey, from what I can and can gather from all, everyone's opinion, there's a mediocre game to start with. So all they did was add a couple little bells and whistles. It's still a mediocre game. That's yeah, that's very true. Um, 
I gotta jump back real quick. Yuki said, is it the other way around? Did I say it wrong about the Vita 2000's battery? I don't know. I don't think so. I think the Vita 2000 right. has has more um, battery time because the screen is takes less power. Yeah, I think that's what I said. I don't know. Maybe I said it weird. That's the way it is. Yeah, the Vita 2000 with the LED screen will give you better battery life yes. because it's not as powerful. Yes. All right. <laughs> Jumping back. Um, yeah, I'm I'm a little excited for Soul Sacrifice Delta, but like I was saying, I just want to make sure it's worth it before I drop. It's probably gonna be like thirty bucks, right? Or it might actually be forty. Uh, yeah. I don't think it's full price because oh, I, I don't think, don't think the the release in Japan was full price either. It was slightly discounted. So oh, okay. Well, I'm not sure what it'll come in as. Hopefully, it's something reasonable, and if it is, then maybe more people will jump in. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely take a look at it, and I'll be bugging Kyle about it, because Kyle has a very good opinions on games, so <laughs> I will <laughs> make sure I listen to him. <laughs> Minus Terraria, because he's stupid. Oh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Just because I don't like Lego-esque games. Yeah. <laughs> um, next up, this one's, I think, for Yuki. Because I'm pretty sure Yuki has the Conception 2 review, am I right? I believe so. Uh, I can't pronounce your name, I'm sorry. It looks like Hotaro Oriyaki? I'm slaughtering your name. I'm going to type it for Kyle and see if he can pronounce it better than I can. Hotaro Oriyaki. Alright, hopefully Kyle pronounced it better than I did. <laughs> Uh, he is wondering uh, if when will the review will be out for Conception 2. He said there's a lot of mixed reviews out there, and he's really curious when it will be coming out. So hopefully pretty soon. I can't speak for Yuki because Yuki doesn't talk. So <laughs> hopefully that I, review will be out I pretty soon. I believe that last um, asked, Yuki said it was going to be a while. <laughs> All right. Well, it's a f I'm enjoying it, so... I, I have no idea what Yuki's opinion is on it, but when he gets that review out, then definitely give that a read and see if uh, if it's something that interests you. Yeah, he's Yuki's been pretty busy with uh, exams and whatnot, so hopefully pretty soon. But there is a demo, so if you have access to the demo, definitely download the demo and see if uh, it's something that interests you. That's what sold me on the game. You should get the demo first anyway, because if you play through the demo and then get the like actual game, it transfers over something that gives you an extra item or something like that. I read. So oh, yeah. there's a bonus or whatever for playing through the demo and then getting the full game. Yeah. Huh. So start with the demo. <laughs> yes, do that. <laughs> I did, but I don't remember what I got. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I believe... Oh, we do have... It's not a question. It's more of a... It is a question, but it's not Billy Costrayer oh gosh you're not going to think we're awesome after this Billy Costrayer I can't pronounce your last name I'm sorry but he says why are you guys, why are you guys so awesome no seriously <laughs> Kyle why are we so awesome um I don't know because we love Vita so much <laughs> that, that must be it <laughs> it might be it I don't know you should tell us Billy why are we so awesome <laughs> Yeah, you guys write us in and tell us why we're so awesome. We need to hear it. I mean, is it because I have three Vitas and two hands? I mean, I don't know. I don't know if that's very awesome. <laughs> Kyle. <laughs> that's gluttony, you. Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, that is all our questions on the Facebook, so thank you, everyone, for replying to that quick after I posted that. <laughs> well, let's head on over to the game recommendation of the week. What do you got this week, Kyle? All right, so this week I'm recommending The Walking Dead Season 1. Dun, dun, dun. So, yeah, um, my review just went up for the first two episodes of Season 2. Um, so far, I, I believe I've given it 4.3 or something like that. Um, but that's irrelevant. Uh, it, it's, the game is awesome. Um, the first season is awesome as well. And with the first season, you get the entire season plus the 400 Days DLC. So you get a lot for what you're paying. Um, it's probably got 
I think it was about eight eight hours of playthrough, like a single playthrough. Um, but there's multiple paths, so sometimes you might want to go play play it again, um, see who lives, see who does, and that kind of thing. Um, but even if not, it's an awesome game, and it's one of the best storytelling experiences on the Vita. Um, not many games tug on my feelings like The Walking Dead did. So, yeah, my recommendation for the week is The Walking Dead Season 1. And go check out my review of The Walking Dead Season 2, because you might want that too. Nice. That yeah. is a great recommendation, Kyle. <laughs> well, thank you, Chalik. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we are done here, so let's get out of here. Uh, remember, you can find all the stories that we talked about by going to the site, thevitalounge.net. Uh, you can also find us all on Twitter. I'm at Mr. PS Vita Reviews. Kyle's at Teflon Tactics. Yuki is at Yuki underscore WR. You can also find us on Facebook. Just search The Vita Lounge. Uh, don't forget to join the forum, um, sign up, join the conversation, chat with some other fellow Vita owners, make some friends, play some games. <laughs> uh, also, our YouTube channel, Lounge Play, go s- look that up on YouTube. Uh, I've been uploading the podcast lately, so I'm trying to get caught back up to the current episode that we're at. I think I'm at like 22 right now, 21, 22. I think I just rendered 22, so I have to upload 22. Um so I'm getting close. It takes a while to render. It's like two, three hours to render one video. So hopefully I can get all of those caught up real quick. And yeah, hopefully we can start up uh, more lounge plays going pretty soon. Yeah, hopefully. Or Sad. even just do some recordings, maybe just some uh, me and you goofing off through some of these games. Yeah, definitely. Unit 13 and Borderlands 2, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Sadly, Borderlands 2 only has two players, so we can't have the community join with us. But yeah, we could definitely do a couple Borderlands 2 videos. I'm sure those would get some good views. <laughs> yeah. But other than that, we are out of here. So I'd like to thank you for listening, and I hope you guys have a great week. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs>